There is no magic pill event where it's like, bing, and you're fixed for life. It's a process. A lot of these things, you've been suppressing them for your entire life. Here we've let go of a lot. We brought a lot up fast. That's the beautiful thing about this event. And we brought a lot up fast. Why? Because it's live and you're surrounded by other people. It's the power of the group. You bring up so much by the power of the group and also uh, being modest, having me be here in person. Okay, because how does, if you want a little behind the scenes of how I see the releases from my perspective, for me it's, um, it's if you ever socialize, this is like the, the king boss interaction set, okay, where it starts and one, I have to emotionally connect with all of you, okay. Now as I'm guiding you through it, I'm super aware. I know exactly how to say something to bring up certain things through those layers of resistance. Now say I say something and it hits on, for example, grief. And it's coming up in you, but you're still resisting it. But then I see it, you, you're experiencing the same thing, but it's coming up a little bit more. Instead of just focusing, I'll try to focus, like saying certain things, see if there's some shifts. And I can just see it from the feeling and subtleties in the facial expressions. If not, I'll jump to you. I'll bring it up in you. And when you allow yourself to experience it through the law of state transference, it'll transfer down over. He'll feel it, it'll give him permission to do it, and it's like pop, 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 this topic, pop, 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 pop. It's like an orchestra of blasting through resistance. That is a release. That's why a live release like this is so fucking powerful. Okay, so it brings up a lot fast. If you were to just do this type of work home alone without coming to live event, it would have taken a lot longer to get all this data up. Okay, that's the beauty of this event. But guess what? You're gonna leave this room, are new things gonna be thrown your way? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Are you going to deal with a lot of challenges? Fuck yeah. Perhaps things that you're going to stuff down? Fuck yeah. Things that trigger you? Fuck yeah. Okay, this is a way of being. Technically, this should have been the first thing that you were taught when you were born, how to let go. Hey, instead of numbing and escaping, what about feeling? What about feeling your way through life? Wow, then you'd be fine. <laughs> There's a lot of things you didn't allow yourself to feel through life which you will have to allow yourself to feel now moving forward to free yourself from it. Okay, so don't stop here. Do not leave this event saying, okay, I'm handled, and then go back to your own ways, because you're not. It's a process, commit to it, do the homework. Whenever you're triggered, do the release. Whenever you feel that need to escape yourself, do the release. Dive deeper into it. What you'll sometimes see is what you experienced here was just blasting through that first layer of resistance. There's layer upon layer upon layer. You can go really deep with this. But the more you do, you will be amazed by how fast things will change and how it's permanent. How to increase receptivity. The openness. Openness to hearing new ideas and the ideas that benefit you the most. How do you increase receptivity? Investment. The more you invest, the more receptive you are. There are certain things that I can only say at an event like this that I could not say at a free event. There are certain things that I can only say at the advance tomorrow that I can't say here. Why? Because if I said them here, there's not enough skin in the game. What does money do? The advance tomorrow is more expensive. It's like um, $9.97. Um, but think about it. If you, who here is coming to the advance? Raise your hand. Nice. So for those of you who are coming, think about it. If you have 1K on the line, like you're coming, right? 1K on the line, and you know, we're gonna break down, okay, what's going on with you? I'll be there bringing it down. Um, and say, so I, I give you the advice you really need to hear. The advice that will get you to the next level. As we discussed with the um, being stuck in the paradigm, does he want to hear the stuff that really helps him? No. Is the stuff that really helps him gonna maybe trigger him or piss him off? Yeah. yeah. If I said this to you and it was free, you'd run off, you'd be like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> what does the money do? It's like, it, it's like tying, like a, it's tying you to me where I'm like, here's the advice, boom, and you like fly off, but then it pulls you back. Here, boom, and you fly off, and it pulls you back until it finally pierces. That's what it does. Otherwise, you'd run off. Completely run off. The advance tomorrow is not a fun event. It gets really intense. It's like raw truth, breakdown, here we fucking go. But that's what it is, boom. Same with here. Here, there's an elastic band, not as strong, but there's still one as opposed to a free event where I'd say and people would walk off. Think about it. If, for those of you who are at the free event, say I was like, hey everyone, we're going to do a 10 minute break and um, I want everyone to pair up in groups of four and to go yell across the street. Are they going to do it? No, half of them are going to run off like, fuck this, too scary. Gone. <laughs> the fact that you have some skin in the game here 
on the money side, but also you're in a group side, that's what allowed you to do things you probably would have never done on your own. Say you right now you paid a okay, five k to be here. How would you have gone through this event having spent five k? For all of you who, for example, didn't take notes, would you have taken notes if you had five k on the line? Yes. What it also does is when you invest, it activates ROI thinking, return on investment, where say you're five k in debt now, 5K minus 5K, instead of going through this like, hmm, is this a funny event, do I like it? You're gonna be thinking, okay, all this information, everything Julian's telling me, how can I apply it to my life? Where can I apply it to my life to make the money back and more? If you haven't been thinking like that through this event, because perhaps 300 is not that big of a deal, then you're screwing up. If you don't find a way to make the 300 back and more, this event is a complete waste for you, you <coughs> fucked up. If you don't find a way to use what I taught you here to make 3K back and more, you fucked up. Okay? Um, so really sink into that. It's like, hmm, how do I create some skin in the game and then filter everything through that? The last one people hate is take responsibility, meaning it's on you. You have to not only invest to increase um, receptivity, not only that, but then you also have to take responsibility. We wish it was just the investment. The more you invest, do it for me. No, it's invest and I got to do it all. <laughs> That's how it works. Okay. Um, and I will say too, again, in terms of taking this seriously, this is more of a, an external approach, but it can be very, very helpful to write down the, the same with that audit, like the worst case scenario, like what will happen if you keep going in this direction. Okay. Like, well, we'll just do 30 seconds here. 30 seconds. Take, take a moment to just sit down. You, can read, you don't have to write this. You can write it down at home, but like reflect on it. Like the past three years, there might be some change. You can acknowledge that change, celebrate that change. But where are some of the areas where it's like, ew, I've just kind of stayed at that level? Perhaps health-wise, work-wise, money-wise, relationship-wise, socializing-wise. What's area, one area of life where you've just stayed at that same level for the past two, three years? Looking at that, time fucking flies by. What makes you think, unless there are drastic changes in your life, that anything will change the next three years? Right? For a lot of people, they have the same New Year's resolutions every year. Even when it comes to socializing, a lot of the people I knew 10 years ago, when I was very shy, they still suck. They haven't changed at all, 10 years. Crazy, huh? Just more of the same, more of the same. Same patterns, same excuses, same everything. This is the other harsh one. Take this in two. If you were smart enough to figure it out, you would have figured it out. I admitted that to myself. Fortunately, early on, I killed my ego and I'm like, I'm too dumb. <laughs> Literally, I'm too dumb. I don't have what it takes. I'm not smart enough, I'm not strong enough. And knowing that, dealing with the truth, I put myself in situations where I made it inevitable. If you aren't dealing with the truth, nothing will change. I tell this to clients as well. I'll tell you when, you when you come tomorrow at the advance, I'm like, who are you, what's going on, tell me the truth. Don't impress me, don't put on a front. If you put on a front, we're gonna just work on the front. Put the real raw truth out there, that's how you get to work. Do that with yourself. Don't keep putting on a front with yourself. Admit the raw truth to yourself. Even if it is, you know, I don't have what it takes. That's fine. Admitting to yourself, you're too weak to do it. You don't have enough energy to do it. Too many excuses. The excuses are too strong. That's totally fine. I had that. You probably heard my story. When I first started working on my social skills, I went out, I couldn't even ask an old person for the time. That was months. And I realized that and I admitted, huh, I guess I can't do this. I don't have what it takes. And I didn't. People don't like this. They, they like the, no matter who you are, you have what it takes. No. But admitting that to myself, then what happened? I went online and I found people who were taking action in that area. And me going out with them, them holding me accountable is what made the difference. That's what allowed me to finally do it. If I didn't do that, I would never have done it on my own. People think, oh, but maybe if you kept going, you'd be frustrated enough. Nah, what happens is you keep going. And if you're already at the bottom, you're not going to get frustrated and move up to anger. You're going to move into grief, become a victim, and then give up. 
it's not that common that someone just keeps going and finally reaches that point where they're like, fuck it, enough. No, they're stuck like, oh, I'm scared, I'm too scared, I can't, I can't. Anger is very rare. You move down to grief. Like, oh, I'm just a victim, I can't, oh, and feel sorry for yourself, and then zoom, down, and you're fucked. Sing into this. If you were to coach you, what would you do? You know your excuses, you know what you're gonna do. Gun to the head. You know if you're actually gonna apply this stuff or not. You know, don't bullshit yourself. How would you coach you? How would you make it? What situations would you put you in so that you succeed? How would you counter your excuses? It's like playing chess against yourself. Okay, I'm gonna put myself in that situation. But even in that situation, what are the excuses I may have? How am I gonna counter that? How am I gonna counter that? And you just block off all the exits where there's only one, which is winning. Okay, that is a lot of what it takes to succeed. It's inevitability thinking and the right tools in a clear direction. My biggest regret when it comes to my career life is the fact that I focused on helping too many people. Biggest regret, too many people, a lot of them, who didn't do anything about it. I focused on helping too many of the wrong people as opposed to doubling down on the right people. Meaning, I gave everyone the same amount of attention. Everyone's here, I'm like, let me all help all of you. <laughs> Biggest regret. What I should have done, and this also applies to social skills, we want everyone to like us. No, double down on the people you're meant to be with. Stop chasing people you're not meant to be with. That's what I did. Stop coaching people who are not ready to be coached. Stop coaching people who don't want to take action and commit. Instead, fuck them and double down on the people who are ready. And this also started shifting um, this year, even in my seminars. For those of you who were there Thursday, my seminars are very triggering now. They repel a lot of people. They piss a lot of people off. Why? Because I don't want to be anywhere near those people. Those are not the people I want to help. I say shit that like, people will be like, fuck this guy, it's too much. Like, yeah, I don't want to work with those people. I'm gonna be me to the fullest, polarize and get rid of the people who I don't want to work with, who don't take them some seriously, who aren't committed, and attract the people who are ready. And I do this at a free event, but I even do this here. I do it through every event. And what is every event? It's a funnel. It's like herding the cattle into the funnel. And at the end, there's the people I really want to work with. Here, I'm gonna herd some of you out. There's some of you where I'd love to work with you, but only in this context, not further. I give you the structure here, because I do want to help as many people as possible, but the ones who are serious, those are the ones I want to herd into this. Where for each week, okay, it's eight weeks, each week I'm gonna give you all the tools I have when it comes to apathy, grief, fear, anger, courage, desire, purpose, and love. Each week you're gonna get meditations, just like the one we did here, for each level. So you can listen to the same MP3s I listen to. In there, there's also the death meditation, an updated death meditation. In there, there's also the morning meditation that I do. It's literally everything I do. In there, each week, there's different assignments. If any of you have ever done a um, workout schedule, where it's like Monday, do this, Tuesday, do arms and legs and chest. You know, it's like different exercises each day. That's what happens this week. You know, week one, when it comes to apathy, Monday, do this, Tuesday, it's like you, you have your transformation workout schedule each week. And the way it's designed is that it combines the content, the structure, the how-to, the releases, the missions, just like we did here. Missions, there's accountability, releases, checking up, constant feedback throughout the way so you don't fuck up and deviate. And it puts you in a situation where you don't have a choice because I'm on your ass every step of the way. You don't want to disappoint me. And what's cool too is it's one that's gonna build as we do it. Um, for those of you who are in it, we're gonna be creating a lot of this together. Why? Because the more I work with people and mentor them through it, different patterns emerge. Like here, this is my structure. Here it's like everything I have, it's in here. But then as people go through it, there's different questions that come up, different issues that come up, different commonalities, different themes. And as I see it, I add to it. And the cool thing for those of you in it is that you keep lifetime access to all of this. So you'll see the new content that's added lifetime. Um, any like call, weekly call, I always post the replays. You'll see the replays even once you're done with it. You'll see replays two months from now of the new clients going through it and their questions. You'll see it three months from now. It's really like the masterpiece where I want to build this to the point where 
It filters out people who aren't serious. It gets the serious ones in there, produces results, like this is the format that produces the most results, even more than one-on-one -on -one coaching. You would think if it was like, oh, if I could just get me and Julie, and I would ask all my questions, like your questions that you ask are not the questions that you should be asking most of the time. You do realize this, right? The question you have burning in your mind is not the question you should be asking, because it's run by your comfort zone in some subtle way. So what happens is when it's a small group, on one hand, you'll see a lot of commonalities, that what's most personal is the most universal, but the most valuable bits of content are the questions that other people ask. They actually ask the question that you should have asked if you weren't run by it. And then the questions you ask actually might help them. So it's this constant loop of people helping each other and you get all these answers from hearing the other people. It's super sick. And the cool thing is um, on the, the group calls, it's not a webinar where it's like you're just typing it, like I see you as well. It's like a Zoom call if you've ever seen that. Um, and even on the Zoom call, we can do virtual exercises like we did here where people get triggered. You know, we did one, um, this is two days ago, and someone's like, I'm always the fear of the people that will judge me and stuff. I'm like, okay, pause right now. Everyone judge him, judging look. So he sees a screen of everyone judging him and it triggers him and then we can dive into that. It's super sick. <laughs> okay, um, so again, this is a passion project. This is what I'm diving into. Um, it's not a program that's for everyone. If you're someone who just wants to be entertained, not for you. If you're someone who just wants to take this easily, not for you. If you're someone who just wants to, oh, I'll take my time with this, not for you. If you're someone who wants some accountability, who wants me in their life, who wants to get that ball rolling, get the momentum going, and you're someone who takes this seriously and wants this handled fast, that's the big word, fast, let's not take a fucking year to do this, eight weeks, let's get it handled, if that's you, join the mentoring.